The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Ingenia Herbicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobe, welcome to the Soybean School. Today, I'm at the Syngenta Honeywood Research Farm and catching up with Matt Underwood. Matt, how's it going? Good, Bern, nice to see you. Thanks for having me on today. Well, I appreciate the uh, opportunity. Hey, we're gonna talk sprayer today. and What sure. goes in the tank? And one of the things I wanna talk about is antagonism. And now, mm -hmm. you did a Master of in Science, right, with a focus on antagonism, right? Yeah, exactly. So, um, a few years ago, I did my Master's of Science determining the fit of Extend Soybeans for Ontario agriculture before the Extend Beans were launched. And part of that research was looking at antagonism between a couple different herbicide families. Yeah, so you're the perfect guy for my questions. Sure. So hey, let's start it off, but you know, so about antagonism, what happens and why? So there's a number of different reasons why antagonism happens, but basically the, the, the long of it is, uh, when you combine a couple different herbicides into a tank, the end result is that you see poorer activity on a weed than you would if you sprayed one or two of those herbicides out separately. Mm. Now, when it comes to antagonism, are there certain sort of products or groups that we have to watch out and sort of manage more? Yeah, so there's there's lots of different cases of antagonism that can occur, um, but certainly the most common is when we mix a, a broadleaf herbicide with a grass herbicide. So a perfect example of that would be a group four herbicide like dicamba with, let's say, a group one graminicide. Yeah, yeah. So, Let's talk about management here now. Mm -hmm. What about options? How do we, you know, manage antagonism and sort of avoid it? Um, you know, give us some give us some tips there. Sure. So, you know, I'll start by saying this kind of dicamba with graminicide uh, antagonism is something relatively new. I mean, we never really had to deal with that when we weren't spraying group fours in soybeans when we were also spraying a graminicide to control volunteer corn. So that was a big focus of my research and kind of a newer area that we hadn't looked at specifically from volunteer corn. So, um, you know, what happens is there's two classes of group ones, um, uh, cyclohexane diones and aeroloxyphenoxypropionates. Try to spell that one out Ooh. for me. Um, and so they, they both act fairly similarly. Uh, in that when you mix the dicamba with the group ones, then we end up seeing reduced activity of the group one uh, herbicide on the volunteer corn. So Matt, when we were talking earlier, you mentioned, you know, you see similar scenarios when you're talking, when you're using FOPs and DIMS. Mm -hmm. um, talk about what happens in those situations. Yeah, so there's two categories within the group one graminicide uh, herbicide family. The FOPs or the DIMS, as you mentioned. So those are short form for aeroloxyphenoxypropionates. Try to spell that I one out. I can say that. <laughs> or cyclohexane dione. So those are the FOPs and the DIMS. And so they both act fairly similarly on volunteer corn, for example. Uh, and then they also have similar uh, levels of antagonism when you mix them with dicamba. So then the question is, well, how do I manage this antagonism? So there's a couple different options. One, we could separate out the uh, graminicide and the dicamba. So let's say spray the dicamba when the weather suits it, come back a couple days later and spray the graminicide. Or we can add the two together and just bump up the rate of the graminicide. And that's typically what I, I would recommend. I mean, with the price of a graminicide, it's fairly cheap, bump the rate up a little bit. You only have to go once through the field, less trampling, um, you know, less fuel and time and things like that. So you're typically better off to bump the rate up of the graminicide and overcome that antagonism. Mm -hmm. Hey, final question for you, and that is, you know, you know, when it comes to field operations, we're yeah. trying to get across that field as efficiently as possible. We've got herbicides, we've got fungicides, you know, we've got the PGRs, yeah. more things going into the tank. Yeah. When you when you think about antagonism, as we, as we put more into the tank, you know, how do we better manage or best manage that situation? Yeah, so I think we need to be aware of what our targets are when we're um, applying these products. So if we are applying, let's say, a dicamba and a graminicide, then we need to be conscious of you know, what those competing uh, actions are within within the uh, the tank. And then similarly, you know, if we're adding a fungicide and a herbicide, we just need to be aware of, of what the, what our targets are and, and manage those accordingly. You know, using our retailers and our um, crop protection reps, uh, you know, they're kind of the experts in there and they yeah. can really help the growers to, uh, to uh, answer some of those questions. Awesome. Hey Matt, um, some great insights. Appreciate you making time for yeah. the Soybean School on Real Agriculture. My pleasure, thanks for having me, Bern. Mm -hmm.